In this video, we're going to learn about freeze and unfreeze for Fusion 360 forms. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to talk about the freeze and unfreeze tool in Fusion 360 forms. So to get started, let's create a new form, and we're going to get started by creating a cylinder. We're going to do this on the right plane. We're going to start and just simply draw a cylinder. Any size is going to be fine, and then say OK. Next, we want to get rid of some of the cylinder, so we're going to box drag from the bottom right to the upper left and delete the lower half. I'm going to go into box display mode for now, and I want to double click both bottom edges holding down the control or command key if you're on a Mac, go to modify, and then use alt to extrude this down. Then I'm going to scale these out slightly, and we're going to say OK. Let's rotate this around, double click this front edge, go back to our right hand view, and we're going to hold down alt and control or Option and Command if you're on a Mac, and let's scale this out. Before we change anything else, let's go ahead and make some adjustments. I'm going to grab the vertices on both sides, and I'm going to make some adjustments here. I'm going to move those up, maybe move them down a little bit. What we're looking to do here is get them to point directly at the center of the wheel. So I'm going to bring these two up, and I'm going to do the same thing here. So that looks pretty good for now. Let's go ahead and rotate this around and go back into smooth display. So you can see what we've created is the lip for a fender. Now, if we wanna keep this lip exactly the same shape, we can use a tool that's called freeze. We're gonna to go to modify, down to freeze, and select freeze. We can double click this inner lip here, which will allow it to freeze that lip. Note that we can also do this on faces as well. If I select this face, hold down the shift key and double click this face, we'll grab that entire loop between them, go to freeze and we'll freeze that. Notice that when we freeze a face, it's gonna grab the edges that are surrounding it. But if we just freeze an edge, then we have a little bit more control over what we're locking. Next, let's double click this front lip. We're gonna to rotate to a front view, hold down the alt key and begin extruding this out. I'm going to rotate around, and I want to make some adjustments here. I'm going to pull these down. I'm going to scale them away from each other. Pull them down a little bit more. I'm going to do the same thing here. Scale them out. I'll do the same thing here. Scale those out a little bit. And then I'll take this center vertex and I'll pull it up slightly. And I want to double click. Go back to a front view, and let's go ahead and extrude another set. And let go of Alt and do it one more time. Next, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a handful of vertices, and let's go ahead and scale them until we flatten them out, and then we'll move them down. To rotate around, we'll do the same thing on the other side. We're going to scale them vertically until we flatten them out. Note that if you go past zero, it's going to reset. So make sure that you get close to zero and then simply bring this down. Go ahead and bring that down a little bit as well. So we've obviously made a pretty bubble looking wheel arch or fender flare. But one thing that's important to note is we haven't really made any changes to that intersection there. If we try to make some drastic changes and we try to pull and move faces around, that inner lip is going to stay the same. So this is a pretty good example of being able to control that inner lip without making too many other additional changes to the geometry. With this edge selected, I'm gonna hit delete. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna delete that. Then I wanna take this edge and crease it. While this isn't strictly required, I wanna note that the crease has undone that freeze that we had on the front section. Now this is one of those situations where we didn't get a warning. Now, most times if you try to manipulate a frozen edge, you will get a warning that's telling you that it has to unfreeze it. But in this case, creasing that upper edge actually overrode that and we didn't get a warning. So it's important to note graphically 
the difference between a frozen and an unfrozen edge. We can still come back and we can refreeze it by going down to freeze and selecting freeze. But just note that it did disappear or it did unfreeze itself. At this point, we can continue playing around with the tools such as inserting edges and modifying the geometry as desired. But for right now, that's about as far as we're going to go with freeze and unfreeze. So go ahead and play around with this on a couple designs, see how it works for your designs and see if you can get it to freeze or unfreeze certain sections to see if you can maintain those shapes. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.